m friends. I'm back after a short break and in the meantime I managed to get infected. In other news, tonight we'll play with this Conqueror Mark II. This is a dragon released way before the amusing hobby kits were available and it's definitely not a quality product because it comes from Dragon's Black Plague series, basically meaning models of more obscure vehicles with very questionable quality and accuracy. I bought this model many years ago and as usual I couldn't resist getting all the available aftermarket for it. For example, Voyager has three sets of photo edge for this model, fenders, side skirts and the basic detailing set. I also bought antenna mounts from Panzer Art as these are completely missing in the kit and even some figures from Valkyrie miniatures, hoping my friend would paint them for me. You might have noticed that the box is rather empty and that's because I already started building the model. Yup, I began working on it in 2017 but slowly lost interest because it's a massive model requiring tons of work and at the end of the day it's not a very exciting subject. I've got some quick photos from the past showing the initial progress on the model. Here I'm for example reshaping and texturing the gun mantlet. Later I noticed how overly long it is so I had to cut it in half and make it shorter. Also, the turret isn't completely accurate, so I did some quick reshaping with epoxy putty and lots of brutal sanding. Texturing was first carried out with a rotary tool and then I covered the cast surface with a thick coat of Tamiya modeling putty. Fenders are actually molded as a part of the hull, so this meant some drastic surgery. My plan was to publish this build in a magazine, I mean, that's why these photos are shot on a white background. But that's as far as I've gotten and five years later I decided to finish the model. Mainly because I've already put a lot of work into it and it cost me a lot of money and <laughs> I just didn't have the heart to throw it away. And the main objective is to make some space in my stash and by finishing it I'll get rid of one huge kit box and one massive shelf queen. As I said, it's not an exciting subject, but luckily there are plenty of photos on the internet showing these tanks as range targets in various stages of disrepair and decay. Lots of options for weathering with little work in the construction department, because these tanks are heavily torn down. So let's get started! My first task was fixing the running gear. It was falling apart from the get-go due to loose fit and I've already lost one return roller. Interestingly, the suspension seems partially workable, which might or might not come in handy later. Basically, this stage was about gluing wheels in place. Not very exciting. Instead of hiding the missing roller, I just went with it, because after all, I'm building a glorified paperweight used for target practice. The front wheels had some shady business going on, so I had to build these improvised axles for them, but because I intend to keep only the sprockets removable, they'll stay in place forever. Also, the Freel model tracks were assembled one link too long, but that was a super quick fix. Now the running gear looks and feels more solid, and I won't have to worry the tank will start disassembling itself at some point. Let's now treat and adjust the photo edge fenders from Voyager. And by treating, I mean ripping them off. A lot of these wrecks don't have any fenders at all. In some cases, we can see them partially missing and what's left is badly mangled. To my own credit, these were glued really well. Once removed, I could easily break the individual sections according to some reference pictures. And while I had them like that, I sanded and removed the corrosion caused by soldiering flux, which tends to develop after a while. Now I could reattach the fender. I only kept this one section, the other side will remain completely empty. If I didn't purchase these fenders, I'd keep the model without them because I think it looks pretty cool like that. There was a lot of leftover super glue in those empty spaces. Some of it could be scraped off with a hobby blade, in other harder to reach places I had to use a chisel. I would either add the remaining fender braces or, if there was nothing left, I drilled out the holes for the missing bolts. Small details like that are always important. Now speaking of bolts, adding them was a tedious task. 
I found that you don't have to use super glue if you're gluing plastic bolts to metal surfaces. Regular modeling cement will do just fine. That also applies to small metal details glued to plastic, as they'll create a strong mechanical bond when they slightly sink into the surface. As a result, the job is super clean. So that takes care of the fenders or what's left of them. This should be pretty interesting once we start painting, but first let's take care of the front section. I added a lot of well detail already, but a good amount was still missing. As usual, I went with my favorite Tommy Epoxy Putty Quick Type, rolling it into thin worms. No scribing was required here, and I could quickly add the welds around every armor plate, fixture, and all the small surface details that were welded to the hull. This entire section is very inaccurate, and the front plate is completely made up by Dragon. There should be weld beads where it meets the side plates, but because I already had the running gear assembled, it was just impossible to add this kind of detail. I know, very sad, but anyway. The periscope and its cover are molded as a single piece, which is cool, but periscopes are missing on range targets. The easiest solution was 3D modeling and printing a new cover, and carving out the opening with a sharp hobby blade. I could then easily weld the cover in place, creating a small, unique detail. The driver's hatch is a whole new story in terms of inaccuracy. First of all, it's very flat, and the real thing is cast with rather irregular shapes. This was solved with a sheet of styrene. The axle detail is also missing, so I had to drill out a large, shallow opening for it. The plastic sheet acts as a template, and the epoxy putty will give us volume. The entire hatch is a rather crude metal cast, and it seems they look slightly different on each tank, which gave me a bit of creative freedom. The entire part was then covered in a thick layer of Tamiya putty, giving it a nice cast texture and also smoothening out the irregular shapes. Weld beads were quickly added to these... Uh, things that locked the hatch in place, giving the part a bit of fineness, and I also added some casting numbers made by Archer Fine Transfers. They're just random letters and numbers, but I think it's better than nothing. And finally, a large nut made from a plastic sheet using the hex punch and die set from RP tools. So that's the reworked hatch, a small detail, but very satisfying. Then I just had to carefully add the missing photo edge, and the front of the tank was finished. Not a lot of stuff going on here, but still, it's pretty cool. The rear of the tank is gonna be much busier though. There are a lot of small engine panels with lots of grab handles. To make this task easier and more accurate, I made a simple drilling template from a piece of styrene. This way, both locating holes for every handle will be drilled out precisely in the middle of each panel, and the spacing will always be the same. The handles were made on this bending tool from one of my patrons. He made a limited batch that quickly sold out, and honestly, I'm not even surprised, because it's a very handy and accurate, um, device. <laughs> All that was left now was gluing each handle in place, using a strip of styrene as a spacer, so every one of them will have the same height. Sometimes I made a bit of mess with super glue, but this was easily covered up with very diluted tabia putty. Let's just pretend the glue isn't there, okay? <laughs> and there was also a ton of well detail on each panel, and here I had to add it before the grab handles, because the working conditions are just too tight. The final missing detail was 1mm circles punched from a thin styrene sheet. The hinge detail in the kit is rectangular, not circular, and I guess it's a byproduct of slide molding technology. So that's the engine deck, and in fact the entire hull out of the way. Lots of fine detail here, and the rear plate was a similar story, mostly just adding some bolts, welds, and a little bit of photo wedge from the Voyager set. Let's now finish the turret, shall we? Starting with the commander's cupola, which is a small turret on its own. I ripped out the clear periscopes first. Thankfully, my gluing wasn't very strong here. Then I could carve out their openings, just as I did on the hull, and modeling cement was used to clean up the parts. The rest was about adding the missing wall detail, and I only had to add a photo edged mount for the machine gun, a couple of parts from the kit, and a scratch-built axle for the missing commander's hatch. 
The vent lid will be another small detail all in its own. Here I started by adding a large plastic tube as a sort of fake gun barrel because this part will be visible. To build the main axle I had to use a large punch and die set, the one you can easily buy in hardware stores. Modeling dies usually don't go above 2mm in diameter, so I think it's useful to have one of these non-modeling sets at hand. Actually, now that I think about it, I have the circular set from RP Tools, the hexagonal set, and the non-modeling set that goes all the way up to 1cm in diameter. The metal frame for the dust cover was made from 1mm evergreen plastic strips. Having these at hand makes your scratch building life a lot easier. Small bolts and rivets can be quickly punched out from tin foil. You just have to insert a drill bit of the required diameter in a pin vise, but with the blunt end sticking out. Then you can just shoot them out like a rivet making machine gun. And as I already said, metal details can be glued to plastic with modeling cement. The glue will soften the plastic and when you slightly press the metal part, it'll sink into the surface, creating a tight mechanical bond. Overall, just no messing around with super glue, the job is super clean and it gives you enough time to position the rivets properly. And once again, the remaining work was just about adding a bunch of small photo edge details because the tank is almost completely torn down, you know, there's not a lot of detail to be added, <laughs> thankfully. I just modified some of the unused parts so I could use them in a potential scenic base. I'm imagining this tank sitting in some kind of military scrapyard and leftover parts would be definitely laying all around it. I mean, it's better to have them ready and not use them later. And at least I could also use some of the side skirts which I already bought but ultimately wouldn't need. So anyway, my friends, this was a shorter and a simpler video, but it's because finishing this model meant just adding details, uh, removing details and reworking details. I did most of the assembly 5 years ago and I wanted to build it as an operational tank in western Germany and turning it into a range target meant stripping some of the details down and adding only the bare minimum that couldn't be torn down in real life. Mostly just stuff that was firmly welded to the tank. As I mentioned at the start of the video I got infected during my break and it was the first time for me since the pandemic started. Um, it wasn't fun, but thankfully nothing serious either. You can probably still hear it in my voice too. So, what's coming up next? Well, I have to give the model a generous coat of brown primer and then spray it in a nice rusty base coat, but that's a story for the next video. In the meantime, thank you for watching my friends and thank you to my awesome patrons who make this show possible. If you like what I'm doing, wanna get more of it and in return support my work, you can go to my Patreon page and see what kind of reward would you like. I'm posting there almost every day with updates from my workbench, we can get in touch through DMs, comments and emails, I'm posting one week early ad free videos so you could watch the rustification process right now. I also have some 3D models for detailing your models and dioramas, a bunch of references from the real world if you need inspiration for old buildings, landscapes and so on, and these beautiful studio photos which you can download in full resolution. Anyway, my dear friends, I'm sorry this video wasn't more exciting, but hopefully you found it somehow interesting and maybe you picked up some new trick. The next one will be more exciting because we're giving this model a completely rusted out finish. And I honestly can't wait to start working on it. Until then you all stay safe, stay awesome, build your models, don't just collect them and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!